In this tutorial, we're going to build a Telegram bot that analyzes food images. When users take a photo of what they're eating and send it to our bot, we'll process it through multiple steps. First, we'll generate a description of the entire food, then classify the food items and run it through a small AI agent workflow. Finally, we'll present useful information, including the number of calories in the food, along with its protein, carb, and fat content, plus some micronutrients. The bot will even suggest exercises to burn those calories. Okay, what we're building is an image to calorie telegram bot. So how does the functionality work? The user sends the image of the food in the telegram bot, and then we process it through multiple AI agents. The first agent takes the initial image, analyzes it, and gets the description. This is our initial food analysis. Then we pass that information to a food classification and refinement bot, which classifies the food and defines the sizes, portions, and everything. Next comes the portion size estimation and nutritional data bot, which provides detailed nutrition analysis based on the portion size and items available. Finally, we pass the output from the previous step, along with the user's sent image, to a nutrition data validation and summary bot. We already have a Telegram bot which we created. This is a simple bot which responds to hi when we say hi, and it is connected through ngrok. All this setup we explained clearly in our previous video. Please check that out if you haven't watched it. Also, this code base is available in my Git repository. I've added the links below in the description. Here you can see there are two new folders. One is Instruction Knowledge Base, and the other is the Scripts folder. We will talk about these a bit more later in this video. Okay, we are going to build this bot using AI. For this, we can use either ChatGPT or Claude, but you need a paid subscription to access their project feature, or you can use this website called prismharmony.com, where you can pay based on what you use. I think on sign up, they give you 100 credits for free. You can try it out and use any model you want. You can create any number of workspaces and projects. I created a workspace called Build Telegram Bot. And by the way, if you want to clearly understand how this application works, we have a video covering this in detail in the description. Before starting, I want to show how many credits we will spend to create this application. Right now, I have 460 credits. Let's see at the end of the tutorial how many credits we would have used to build this application. Now let's go to our workspace for building Telegram bots. In this workspace, you can see I have some core instructions I've given. I'm telling it's a Node.js application, and it is meant to write clean, maintainable code, and this code has to be a well-structured Telegram bot. These are instructions which any project in this workspace will adhere to when talking to the models. Now let's create a new topic. Let's call it image to calorie bot. For the topic instructions, as we don't know what instructions we need to add to make a better bot, to do this, we can use the support of the model itself. Let's use Claude Sonnet for this brainstorming and create a new chat. Here we will clearly explain that we have a workspace where we're building a Telegram bot. And in this topic, we want to build a bot which takes an image from a user and converts it into nutritional information. We'll provide basic information about the bot and then we'll ask the model itself to come up with a plan or outline architecture. Once it comes up with the plan, we can ask the model to create the topic, instructions and knowledge base for this project so we can add this information to the model's context. The model will provide a detailed structure of what documents you can add, what type of information they should have, and what type of instructions you can provide. Then you can add this back to your topic and start creating new chats. I already ran through this conversation and have the information available. Let me add that to the knowledge base. You can find all this information in the finished repository. Here, we're explaining that we're building a Telegram bot and providing information about the bot. We also mentioned there's a master plan about this complete topic in masterplan.md, which we will update later in the knowledge base. The master plan has clear details of how the bot should work and what strategy we're using. In the master plan, we mentioned we have a file called topicllmstrategy.md, which clearly identifies our model strategy. As I said, this is a multiple agent process. We have one step for analyzing images, a second step for classification and refinement, a third step for estimation, and finally, nutritional data validation. All this information is available. Let's add them back to our topic. 
First, let's add the instructions and then add the knowledge base, our topic master plan, and also the model strategy. Awesome. So whenever we create a chat now, models will access these topic instructions and knowledge. Now to the topic knowledge, we have to add the existing code files. If you see, we have a few files, Axios, Telegram, and Helpers, which are the basic setup needed for our application. We can add these things directly to our knowledge base, but it would be nice if we add one comment on top of each file, telling the hierarchy or structure of that file. Let's say this Telegram file is inside library slash telegram.js. This helps the model understand our code structure better and give more accurate output. We can do this manually or use a bash script which copies all the dependencies based on the source directory into a new directory called AI training set and adds the comments as well on top of each file. Let's see how it works. Let's add our script in package.json called copy and run the file. You can see it created an AI training set with all the files and added one comment on top of each file. Now let's add all those files to our topic knowledge. Awesome. We added everything. Now let's create a new chat. If you see in our model strategy, our first step is image analysis and description. So we'll go to our chat and tell it we want to build our first step from our strategy file. Since the model has access to our topic knowledge, it will go through everything and understand our code structure better to give tailored output. One pro tip. Whenever you're building something, always end your conversation with the model with the sentence. Before answering, let me know if you have any questions. This forces the model to ask questions or clarify things before giving random answers. This mostly results in accurate and well-structured responses. As you can see, this helps us sometimes to reflect on our implementation plan and think of scenarios we might forget. But let's not deviate too much. First, let's build the basic functionality and then we can improve. Always aim for simple steps. Now I'm telling it to do basic validations, not do too much. And I'm answering all the questions back to the model. Now the LLM came back with the code and also step-by-step -step instructions to execute our first LLM strategy. It provided details on where to put this file, what changes to make, and specified exactly which functions we need to modify and which ones we should keep as they are. First, let's install the package it suggested, Google Generative AI. This is the package we use to communicate with Google Gemini APIs. We'll use Google Gemini in this project. I'll explain why shortly. Let's add the changes to our code base. Oh, I notice it made a small mistake here, reusing the same variable twice. Let's rename it and call it image response instead. Let me walk you through the code. We're importing the Google Generative AI package from Google. This is the method we'll use to call any Google Generative AI APIs. We could use OpenAI or Anthropic for this project, but we're choosing Google because they offer good performance and a generous free tier for us to experiment with. Anytime you want to change the LLM, you can simply swap your generative model in this file, and you're good to go. We're importing the error handler and then creating a Google Generative AI object by passing our Google API key. We'll see how to get this API key shortly. Then we pass the image that users upload in the Telegram bot. We fetch that image, convert it into a buffer, and then convert it to a base 64 image, which is the format Google expects. Next, we create the prompt to pass to the LLM, telling it to analyze the image and provide a detailed description about the food, visual characteristics, estimations, and basic details about what it's seeing in the image. Finally, we pass the text response back. Now let's update our telegram.ejs file, process the photo method. When we receive a photo, we get the public file path and send that to the analyze image with Gemini function we just created. Let's make a small change here. Like before analyzing the image, let's first send an initial message to the user like analyzing your food image. Now let's see how to create this Google API key. Go to Google AI Studio, which is a playground offered by Google to try out all their AI models. Let's accept their terms and conditions, and here we can get an API key by clicking Create API Key. We'll add it to our code base and restart our server. Let's give it a try. Hmm, it failed to analyze the image. Let's see why. The error says Gemini Pro Vision has been deprecated, so we need to use another model. Let's go back to AI Studio and see what models are available. We can see Gemini 1.5 Pro is available. 
Let's copy the model name from here and change it in our code base. Let's restart and test it out again. Okay, it's analyzing the food. Awesome. We can see it's identifying the food items in the image. It has recognized a grilled salmon fillet and described some characteristics. How the fillet looks, how it might be cooked based on appearance, portion size, and other ingredients on the plate. We can see all the details very clearly. Now let's continue with step two. Before that, let's go back to our topic knowledge and update only the changed files, or better yet, let's delete everything except our topic master plan and LLM strategy, then re-upload them with the latest changes. Great, we've re-uploaded our code and now let's create a new chat for building the second step in our LLM strategy. Always make sure to keep your chats with the LLM as small and precise as possible, focusing on one feature at a time. This gives you better results and significantly reduces costs. The longer the conversation, the higher the costs. I always try to keep chats to no more than four or five exchanges. Now let's implement step two, food classification. Again, we'll tell the LLM we need to build step two of our strategy and we'll ask it to ask questions before answering anything. Great, it came up with some questions. Let me answer those. Now it's provided a plan and code. Let's explore the changes before adding them to our code base. It's adding a new method to our LLM.js file called classify and refine foods. It performs some basic checks, imports our LLM model, though it seems to be importing the wrong model, we'll fix that later, and then creates the prompt. It takes the initial analysis from the previous step, calls the LLM with this new prompt and the initial analysis, and sends the text back. It also updates our telegram.js file, modifying the process the photo method to send the photo through the initial step we created previously. Take that response and send it to this second method we're adding now. Let's update our code with these changes. Let's give it a try. It's analyzing the photo. Awesome. Now we can see it analyze the image and classify it. The classification result shows details about the food item salmon, including its ingredients, appearance, additional notes, and information about how to measure it, whether by weight or volume. For step three, let's delete our training set and create a new one by running npm run copy to copy all these changes. Now let's go to our topic, delete our old code files and update with the latest files. Let's create a new chat and proceed with step three, again nudging the LLM to ask questions before answering. Great, let me answer all these questions. Let's review the changes. In LLM.js, it's telling us to add a new method that takes the URL of the food image and the refined text from the previous step. We'll send both the image and text to the LLM with a prompt that says, act as a nutrition expert and create a user-friendly summary. We're asking it to analyze the image, convert it into portion sizes, nutritional analysis, and total calories being as specific as possible. Let's add these changes to our code base and update the telegram.js file. After getting the image URL, we do step one, then step two, and then send that response to step three to estimate the nutritional analysis before sending the message back to the user. Let's test it out. We send an image. We see the step one data. It's doing classification for step two. And now step three is processing. Excellent. We can see the step three data. Based on the image, it estimated the weight in grams, provided nutritional analysis, including calories and micronutrients. Now for our final step, let's copy the training set again, go to our topic, delete and re-upload our code files and ask to implement the last step. Again, we'll nudge the LLM to ask questions before answering. This time, we'll specify that we want the final message formatted nicely for Telegram, with a structure that includes a short summary of the food, the total carbs, and a funny quote at the end. After sending this message, the LLM asks some questions. Let's answer those. Now we can see the final implementation. It added a new method that calls our model with a prompt to create a user-friendly summary of the nutrition analysis from the previous step. We pass it through the LLM and send the result back to the Telegram bot. In the process, the photo method, we just need to add this as our final step. Let's update our code. Let's test it out. 
fingers crossed, we can see step one, step two, step three, and finally step four. Wonderful. It's telling us, hey, this is a salmon and cherry tomato dish. With nutritional details including calories, it uses nice emojis as we requested, lists key micronutrients, suggests exercises to burn these calories, and includes an encouraging quote. We've achieved what we set out to build. Let's recap what's happening. We send an image in our Telegram bot, which processes it through initial image analysis to get a description, then performs food classification and refinement, followed by portion size estimation and nutritional data retrieval for a detailed nutrition analysis. At this step, we send both the nutritional data and the image for better results. Finally, we format all this information in a nice, readable way for the user to understand. Now let's see how much we spent for this whole tutorial. We have 424 credits remaining, so we spent approximately 36 credits, which is around 36 cents, to build this Telegram bot. That's quite reasonable. Now let's look at some common errors we might face and some tips to improve this into a production level bot. First, whenever you see the error 429 too many requests, resources have been exhausted. This happens because we're using the free API from Google, which has certain restrictions. If you check their website, Gemini 1.5 Pro has a free tier limit of two requests per minute or 50 per day. Since our app makes four calls, if we do more than two calls in minute, we'll get that error indicating we've crossed the free limit threshold. To avoid this, we can alternate between different models. For example, we could use Gemini 2.0 Pro for the first step, Gemini 1.5 for the second step, and back to Gemini 2.0 Pro for the third step. Alternatively, we can add a billing account to our Google Gemini API key to increase our rate limits. To do that, go to their website, click on the hamburger menu, select the billing option, and link your credit card details. Once you've added billing information, your API rate limits will increase to around 2,000 requests per minute. Now for some next steps to improve this bot. First, concentrate on the LLM's questions. If you remember, whenever we chat with our LLMs, we're always saying, before answering, let me know if you have any questions. The model always comes back with questions. Try to reflect on those questions. Are there features we can add to improve the bot or performance aspects we can address? Second, choose the right model for the job. Right now, we're using Google Gemini for every step. Instead, maybe we should mix and match different models. Perhaps for image analysis, we should try if GPT is better than Gemini. Or for nutritional data, maybe Claude would work better. Just try different models and see how the results improve. Third, implement image validations. Currently, we're taking any image and processing it through all the models. Instead, add a step to validate the image first. Analyze if the image is readable or if it's actually a food image before processing it further. Also, at the last step, when we get the nutritional data, we're just sending that data directly to the user. We could add a step where we fetch nutritional information from trusted sources like USDA food data using their APIs and give that information to the LAM to cross-check before sending it to the user. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments what type of bots you want to learn about next or if you have any feedback. I'm happy to hear from you. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Let's Build Together for more programming tutorials like this one.